Hello everyone, this is another video of um, Piano World course. In this video, I will show you how I'm analyzing and practicing octaves and chords. And as usual in the beginning, I'm gonna show you the simple routine that I'm doing with octaves. Um, so maybe you can use it as well. down below in this video uh, to be able to understand what I'm talking about in these videos and I guide you through some um, scales, arpeggios, octave chords, exercises. So as usually we start with imagining um, every single note in a um, string group of instruments. We're gonna use violins over here, cellos, and again violins and going up. Now be sure that you are able to imagine four parts in your head um, because it's very important to control fingers and fingertips when I'm playing octaves. When you again, when you're able to imagine them, that will let your fingertips be tenacious which is very important in octaves because if your fingers are still sluggish and unsensitive then you will have to strain your wrist or hand to be able to make a sound because I all know many many times when we play octaves one of the notes either lower or either a uh, higher one wouldn't sound so it's all tired with able to control your fingertips and the way we control, we imagine the notes in our head. So, <clears throat> as usually we imagine with movements, you can start again with right hand. To the right when we go up, to the left when we are going down. Um, again, try to keep uh, illusion of glissando between notes while you do this. And The way we move wrist, I will just show you. Every time we move our wrist a little bit to the right, just this way. And then we go down a little bit to the left. The way we move elbow, because every single time, every single octave, there is a new position because we move our one position, one position, one position, but we cannot actually move our elbow every single octave. So I just suggested to make like three notes in one octave to move your elbow. That could be first, third, and fifth note. One more thing, when you are playing octaves, you always need to play in this line of the keyboard because for example, if you play octave that includes black keys, you have to move your hand every time just this way. I will show you. It takes so much time and energy while playing, so you cannot make fast octaves uh, without feeling like um, very, very uncomfortable. <laughs> so, um, you, every time you need to play on one line, in this case, um, you don't have to make this movement 
everything will be under your fingers right away. So I'm playing uh, this octis with um, imagining of a uh, string group of instrument with movement, with glissando, watching my wrist, watching my elbow. just because there is no big leap uh, but still you should really understand how you move your elbow while playing octaves it's very important if you don't do this if you don't make position change correctly that will bring additional stiffness to your hands as you probably know next step we're gonna make it with international weight which brings more freedom to our octaves But sometimes I can use forte to, to improve sensation in my fingertips. Mm. <clears throat> so if you imagine huge sound and make it with intonation and weight, um, that will let you do this. Again, please do not play scales if you don't have clear idea how it sounds in your head, like huge sound. So. Um, Okay, let me play it in, in, in forte. piano sound mm -hmm. next step is usually I'm gonna voice extreme parts in this octaves imagine clear clear and closer to myself uh -huh. Please make sure that you're still able to uh, to imagine uh, other parts <laughs> that first fingers are responsible for. In this case, they will still be independent, these first fingers, because we all know they are very lazy while playing octaves. Now we're going to imagine in sound texture everything. Faster, you can. 
mean actually, you cannot say that we are moving my elbow. It all seems just it's very natural, but trust me, I know exactly when I'm moving my elbow. <laughs> Um, so now you can use different uh, articulations, you can try to play with a staccato. It just gives you a better sensation of muscles within, you, within your hand. You can play um, accents. and play making big sound in one forte. Okay. dynamics uh, with voicing, um, with musical speech and intonation and read. Again, when we play minor, be sure you intonate this third very nice, especially when you go down, when you're going down, because we're playing with our weakest finger on this black key and if you intonate this third very nice that will let muscles exert better before playing this note now we're gonna make phrasing the limit of motif one octave the main interval is the very last one just like in scales I'm gonna play by motifs <coughs> some water. I still cannot get well completely. I don't know what's going on with my throat. <laughs> okay, give me a second. All right, I'm back. So now we do phrasing. In this phrase, <clears throat> we're gonna make a second motive more important. Uh, we still keep main interval in every motive. So I'm gonna play by phrases. Yeah, so in the phrase, I'm sorry, second motive is more important when we go up and first motive more important when we're going down. phrase is more important than second phrase. So basically this phrase we emphasize more and this one we emphasize less. Phrasing, emotional image. So usually we make um, very simple. This one joy, this one sad, this one sorrow. I'm gonna play with all sound texture, imagination, with musical speech, with phrasing, feeling how we express, feeling of joy through these little spaces between notes, because we do this through intonation and weight. Okay, so joy. Still doing in, in this within the phrase. 
confusing. Um, what is next? Form, I guess? Um, yeah, just, just distribute parts of form just like we did in um, scales or um, arpeggios. This first one going to be an introduction, then beginning, development, intensification, rising to climax, that would be climax, and then the last part is uh, conclusion. Okay, so I will try to let you feel that. And all we do with feeling of joy, It's like introduction with major color and introduction with minor color. Then beginning and major, beginning and minor. So that way. intonation. Now when we go to the second part and we're gonna make it with uh, time, now I have to limit myself and make everything in steady beat. So we're gonna pull state as we did in scales every single octave and it's gonna be very 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 slow pulsation like So you just need to merge it together with emotional image and form. Don't feel it in absolutely different um, way. And just start playing. this pulsation but you always have to feel it while playing and just one more time when e no matter which tempo you choose from beginning even if it's very slow you still feel this pulsation and if you're going faster and faster you still feel it artistry <clears throat> so the whole bunch of things sound texture and all the movements and um, musical speeches intonation and weight and phrasing and emotional image and form and time all this we're gonna 
express and gonna convey and deliver through artistry. I'm just trying to make it as much as I can to show you this. So usually, as, as I showed you just in the beginning, you just feel it and... And you just try to make everything through artistry while playing. Uh, <coughs> Okay, so now I will show you how I'm playing chords. Um, the, you know, we have so many different ways to play chords, but I choose that way that um, lets you see how position change helps you to play with fluency and ease all big leaves so the <coughs> the pattern that i choose is like one octave apart like this uh, <coughs> so let me again show you the whole routine first <coughs> gosh challenging part because uh, now you have to imagine oh my god eight notes together again just the same rhythm and octaves <coughs> um, if you're not able to imagine four notes in one hand four notes in left hand eight notes together in your hand that most probably one of the uh, fingers will not work in one of the fingertips will not touch the key as other uh, fingertips do. So <coughs> please make sure that you're able to imagine, again if you have problems with that, <coughs> start imagining all the notes in order then reduce time between them until time is zero and now all the sounds from horizontal line goes to vertical and they all sound together. Uh, using the same timbers, strings, uh, group of instruments, violins, cellos, violins. Moving my wrist the same way. <coughs> so this one going up. That's why I move my wrist to the right. This chord is lower than this, I'm going left, I move my wrist to the left. Now the main part why I'm doing this octaves to show you um, my elbow movement. <coughs> I need to drink again water. <laughs> so when you move your wrist to the left, you move your elbows to the right. Then you move your wrist to the right, you move your elbow to the right. You move your wrist to the right, you move your elbow to the left. This kind of is tricky. Now when you move your 
wrist to the left, elbow to the left. Now, wrist to the left, elbow to the right. So basically some of notes um gonna be easier to make because wrist and elbow movements match. Like in this case, or when we go down, and in this um, extreme chords, elbow and wrist movement gonna go opposite way. Left elbow to the right. Elbow, wrist to the right, elbow to the left. I'm gonna show you now how I'm playing in timber with movements. Yes, please make sure you make. Uh, huge glissand. When you mention notes with movement in um, timber of string group of instruments, so let's see how it looks like. For example, you have this waltz accompaniment, and every time to make it simple for your left hand, you play bass to the left and move your wrist to the left, and then you move your elbow to the right. Then we're going down, and again, elbow first, prepare a um, new position. I don't know what I'm playing, <laughs> just some progressions. told you already in the in the main course in one of the lesson when you just try to move your uh, whole arm just warming up you know sometimes people play scales but I'm telling you even after I do this I'm stretching my hands I'm, um, all my fingertips are working together even after this playing scales and feel just much easier so now we're gonna play it with intonation and wait in harmonies of C major, C minor Now in dynamics, again you can choose different You can imagine first probably um, in the in forte Okay, let me try. Very huge sound. Again, we only make fortes using our weight. piano again because my goal is to uh, uh, make 
this position change as fast as I can. So I'm gonna imagine piano. And uh, the last part I'm gonna voice again extreme voice, uh, extreme parts like I did in octaves. So I'm imagining my uh, fifth finger closer. Mm -hmm. muscles over here better. Now I'm mentioning in sound texture. with forte. Mm. <laughs> so first I imagine on forte. Okay. to move to the a musical speech. Yeah, yeah, finally musical speech is different here. <laughs> so every time you make octave, every time you make open statement. So let's play with musical speech. Such a big interval, huh? Phrasing. So one motif is one octave here. So basically, motive and interval are the same. So we just <laughs> emphasize every octave here. I'm gonna play by motives. Now, the phrase that you already guessed 
important this motif less important includes two um, two keys major and minor so basically this is one phrase and this is another phrase and because major is more bright and minor kind of more cloudy that's why I'm choosing major to be more important phrase in this sentence I'm gonna play by sentence emotional image I uh, keep the same as we did in the previous um, pattern so it's gonna be major it's joy minor it's sorrow and we're gonna make it within the phrasing Okay, I will play it very slow so you could feel it very well.
I want to live faster. First, I'm feeling emotional image and form in faster tempo than express your artistry. I'm not sure I can play the whole routine in this in this in this time. Uh, all right, these are the main uh, types of technique. This is scales, arpeggios, octaves, and chords. Then you can um, where you can apply all the knowledge of piano well chords and uh, see how it changes the way you practice <laughs> this technique. Uh, I really encourage you to practice it this way because it's more fun, it's more interesting and more important it just develops all the all the basic seeds that we just we just we just discovered. So it's a very good for beginning. It's a very good for beginning. Uh, from next video um, I will start showing you how I'm analyzing and practicing issues by shopping and um, along the way I will show you how I will probably show you the main problems in these issues and how um, your piano well skills help you to overcome those problems. Alright, I uh, wish you all of them have a great day, enjoy your time, enjoy your life and uh, hope to see you in my next video. It's gonna be really interesting, I can tell you. <laughs> Alright, bye bye.